out there today. It was all walk through. As far as um, preparation and adjusting to, to life without Mike McDaniel, how have things gone with Chris Furster this year? And um, has he been able to give you a, a new or, or a different perspective just given his old line background? I mean, has that been valuable to you? It always has. Chris uh, was with me in Washington for four years um, before we brought Mike there. Um, and he's been here for, I think, four years. So, um, you know, I know he's got different, more added to his title, but I mean, he's always been the same, the same role here. And then, um, no, so Chris has always been a big part of this. Um, it's been different, you know, I mean, Mike's been with me, I think, like 18 out of these 20 years. So, um, and I think only two of those years he was a position coach. So just, you see, like in a week like this, always having him available, always, um, when guys are in their coaching, I always had Mike making tapes, um, the two of us going through things, prepare for a meeting and stuff like that. So <clears throat> it's been a lot more responsibility on some of the newer guys, younger guys, guys like Clay Kubiak, um, Brian Fleury and stuff, just helping prepare all that stuff for the players and uh, helping me getting ready for my stuff. Work out on, on game days. I know that Mike used to be up up on high, and, and Chris obviously has to do the O-line stuff. W will he be able to, you know, Will you be able to use him as a sounding board out there for, for play calls or anything like that? I mean, yeah, I'll use the exact same way I've used him the last four years and the way I did for four years in Washington. And I mean, that's it's always been the case with our, our line coach, especially Chris and whatever line coach I've ever been with. Has Kittle played in a game before during a week he did not practice? I don't know. I'm just, I would guess he has, but I don't know. I don't remember those facts. Has Elijah Mitchell been? I know he was working back. Do you feel like he, if he had to, he could handle a, a full workload this week? Uh, I hope so. I mean, you hope a running back always can handle a full full workload. He's looked good these two weeks um, in these practices we've had. And I mean, he's 100%. Uh, we'll see how the game goes with that, though. Uh, they, with Kittle, the fact that he hasn't been on the field since, since Monday, but it's questionable. Um, obviously, there's some reason for optimism. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why he's questionable. Yeah. Questionably. <laughs> all right, I don't know how else to probe it that way, but all right. <laughs> the answer either. Uh, look, looking back to Chicago last year and, and that play to Debo, it felt like that was a pretty significant moment in the season. Like not to say that the season would have been over if you didn't make that play or win that game, but I get, uh, the post in the half the. The, the screen on third and 16. Yeah. I guess, how do you remember that play and the significance of that? Uh, remember, I was upset as could be that it was third and 16. And let's just try to throw a screen and hope we can gain some yards back and maybe magically get a first down. And then Debo does what he's done on a number of plays. So uh, that was a huge play for us. And it seems like he's had a few of those, though. We're good. Just one more. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo was on the injury report this week and but practiced uh, in full. I mean, was that just, um, you know, uh, I guess why was he on the injury report? Clue. I didn't even know that he was. Maybe old lingering stuff. I'm not sure. He was on the injury report? Procedural since he was back. Okay. Procedural stuff. If I said that word right. Greenlaw was dealing with the elbow all week. He's 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 fine, good go. That's why I didn't give him a designation. Uh, does this does this feel, I guess, compared to when you started here, being along six years now? How, how does it feel just compared to when you started? Do you, do you still get the same excitement creating a game plan? Oh yeah, I mean, season's the season. I mean, it's all they all feel the same. I mean, when you get into them, I mean, there's. I mean, there's a, everyone's anxious before the first game. You just wanted to get here. Can't get here fast enough. I mean, there's in this sport, there's a lot of talk and stuff. That's what people enjoy. That's, that's what I enjoy when I'm not in it. Um, but there's nothing to talk about till you play the game. So, and there's you're only allowed 17 of them unless you earn more. So, can't wait to get to this first one. Get this year going. And um, the first one's always fun, um, but it's the beginning of a long, long run, and uh, that's what I'm excited for. Well, this is a significant chance of rain for Sunday. How's that play up to a team's strengths? Um, it can sometimes. It 
It might not the other. I mean, you, you got to find out with your team. Uh, we'll see how we play in the rain. I never know if that's going to be an advantage or disadvantage. I don't know exactly how the other team's going to be. Um, there could be pluses and minuses to both. Sometimes I feel rain's helped. Sometimes it's hurt. Um, sometimes it can slow down your O-line and you don't get good traction and it can be a much easier for the defensive line. Um, sometimes the receivers can't cut on a slippery field and it's a lot easier for guys to stay on them and hold them in coverage and, and then obviously the throwing. So there's so many variables that go into rain that I try to never make too big a deal about it. You just see what's going on in the game and you see what teams are having advantages or disadvantages and you try to adjust as it goes. goes into determining who your flex players are if you're for the first game. Uh, it's whoever we need. Yeah, we'll flex the guy up if we need him. A lot of running backs on this roster. What do you made of, uh, of Ty Davis Price and, and of Jordan Mason going up this week in game one? Um, I mean, those two guys are battling right now. I mean, we got we got um, those guys are battling. I mean, we could possibly get four up, but you know, a lot goes into this stuff. It's not just about carrying the ball. Um, you know, rarely do three guys always get the ball in the game, but we usually use three somehow. And last year we had four up at some time. So we'll see what we are. Our final guys are up on Sunday, but uh, those guys have been battling all week and doing a good job in the run game and both getting better on special teams. You have four tight ends as well on the roster, Tyler, Charlie, Ross. What do you made of them this week, and how deep do you guys feel you are, even if Kittle misses? Um, I mean, I'm glad we kept four. I mean, just with Kittle getting banged up this week, um, you know, we rarely carry four into the game, so we'll see how that goes. But if Kittle can't make it, I'm glad that we kept an extra one on our roster. I got it. Appreciate it. From practice squad, so that's kind of how it works. And it goes the same way with backs and the same with every other position. So you're always just trying to guess on that stuff. Good? Thank you. All right, guys.